Shalom to all of you, my friends and family, and our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Thank you, each of you, for your love and for your prayers, and thank you also for your patience, because I know that these last couple of days have just been crazy. Believe me, I know. Friday morning rolls around, I wake up in bed with these intense bouts of vertigo, the whole room spinning wildly. Yeah, that was uh, fun. That was a fun experience, let me tell you. And then I was having multiple bouts of dizzy spells throughout the day. This was, again, Friday. Now, all praise be to Yehovah God. Hallelujah. Turns out the vertigo and the dizzy spells were very likely caused by a vitamin D deficiency. So, Friday, I learned this. I take a lot of vitamin D. I spent some time out in the sun as well. Saturday rolls around, no vertigo, no dizzy spells. And then today, Sunday, no vertigo, no dizzy spells. So, hallelujah. Turns out, the vitamins and the minerals that God has created for us, for his creation, for the human body, well, it turns out, well, if you have the vitamins and minerals that your body needs, you're not going to have any issues. But uh, if you are deficient in those vitamins and minerals, that's when the issues happen. So, um, had to cancel, uh, the Friday evening weekly worship service as a result of that vertigo and the dizzy spells. But as it turns out, even if I didn't have the vertigo and dizzy spells on Friday, it wouldn't have mattered because Friday evening around 5 PM, the internet in the whole region, in which I live in Northern Utah, the internet goes down. I've called the internet company three times now over the past two days. And I get the same message each time. We're working on it. We're working on it. There's been an internet outage in the whole area. There's been upwards of 400 residents that have experienced the exact same thing. The internet completely going down over these last two days. And they're working on it. That's all I can say. They're working on it. <laughs> and that's like, well, I certainly hope so, because until the internet's back up and running, I, I'm stuck. It's like, all I can do is come to you with a video created right from my phone and uploaded through the cell service to the YouTube ministry page. And that's just what I'm going to have to do. In fact, if I, if I can't come to you with a weekly worship service continuing in the book of Joshua, as I had intended and hoped on Friday, and same thing yesterday, yesterday evening, and same thing today, it's been my hope that I've been able, that I would be able to come to you with a weekly worship service, live stream teaching. If I can't do that, well, then at the very least what I can do is create a teaching right here from my phone, use the cell service, get it to you, and um, that's just what I'm going to do. So <laughs> what, I've, um, what I've done, my brothers and sisters, is that I've written up an article, a teaching from the Word of God, a teaching that I've entitled the partaking of pride seemed to be appropriate now that we are in the month of June, a month that the world has determined is dedicated to pride. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil. Genesis 3, 4 through 5. There were many trees in the Garden of Eden, but two trees were of the utmost significance, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, a tree that I personally refer to as the tree of death. Yehovah God had sternly warned Adam and Eve to never partake of the fruit of that cursed tree, promising that, quote, when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Genesis 2, 17. As watchful believers, we must understand that Satan's tactics to destroy the human soul have not changed over the past 6,000 years. He may refine his tools and his methods of delivery, but his core tactics remain the same. He first causes people to doubt the word of God by asking, Did God really say? Genesis 3, 2. He then outright calls God a liar by stating that what God has declared to be true 
is actually false. You will not certainly die. Genesis 3, 4. Then comes his most insidious lie. His empty promise that through disobedience to the Almighty God, quote, you will be like God. Genesis 3, 5. Yeshua Messiah declared that the devil was a murderer from the beginning and that he is the father of lies. John 8, 44. How perfectly true. Because literally from the beginning of the world, Satan has sought to murder the eternal souls of God's children by convincing them to believe in his lies and partake of the fruit of that wretched tree of death. That foundational lie of you get to be God yourself is one that so many have fallen for throughout human history and continue to fall for today. It is the lie that says we get to determine the moral order. We get to be our own moral masters, our own lawgivers, our own arbiters of what is good and what is evil. To believe in this lie and to partake of the fruit of the tree of death is to partake of the sin of pride. It is to shake one's fist at the heavens and declare in supreme arrogance, I don't need you to tell me what I can and can't do. I am my own God. I get to decide for myself. The Word of God continuously warns us of the dangers of the sin of pride, promising that, quote, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18. Throughout the Word, we see the fulfillment of that promise time and time again. It was this sin of pride that brought about the fall, and Adam and Eve's expulsion from the Garden of Eden. It was pride that brought mankind down into such a wretched state of wickedness where every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. Genesis 6-5 And Yehovah God came out in righteous judgment and destroyed all the world with a flood of water. Pride led mankind to gather together and build a tower to reach to the heavens so that they might, quote, make a name for themselves, Genesis 11.4. Pride brought about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone, for they had become a people that were, quote, arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and needy. They were haughty and did detestable things before Yehovah, Ezekiel 16.49-50. It was pride that led the ruler of Tyre to boast that he was a god. Quote, In the pride of your heart you say, I am a god. I sit on the throne of a god in the heart of the seas. But you are a mere mortal and not a god, though you think you are as wise as a god. Ezekiel 28.2 this same pride brought about his own death and the ruin of his kingdom. Quote, Because you consider your wisdom to be equal to that of God, I will bring foreigners against you, the, mo the most barbarous of all the nations. They will draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They will hurl you down to the pit, and you will die a violent death in the heart of the seas. Ezekiel 28, 6-8 Pride led to the demise of the king of Babylon. Quote, You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens, I will raise my throne above the stars of God, I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly to the utmost heights of Mount Zephon, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds, I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. 
Isaiah 14, 13 through 15. Pride brought the curses of the Almighty down upon King Nebuchadnezzar and drove him insane. Nebuchadnezzar said, Is not this the great Babylon I have built as the royal residence by my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty? Daniel 4.30 it was not until he eventually, quote, raised his eyes towards heaven in repentance that his, quote, sanity was restored, Daniel 4.34. And ultimately he was brought to declare in humility, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the king of heaven because everything he does is right and all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride he is able to humble. Daniel 4, 37. Pride led to the horrific death of the wicked Seleucid Greek king Antiochus Epiphanes. Quote, Thus he who only a short time before had in his superhuman arrogance believed that he could command the waves of the sea and who imagined that he could weigh high mountains on a scale was thrown down to the ground and had to be carried in a litter, clearly manifesting to all the power of God. The body of this ungodly man swarmed with worms, and while he was still alive, suffering agonizing torments, his flesh rotted away, so that the entire army was sickened by the stench of his decay. Only a short time before, he had thought that he could touch the stars of heaven. Now, <laughs> no one could even bring himself to transport the man because of his intolerable stench. 2 Maccabees 9, 8-10 Pride caused Herod Agrippa to embrace the praises of his people when they declared him to be a god. Quote, on the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, This is the voice of a god, not of a man. And immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. Acts twelve twenty one. Through 23. And many more examples can be cited. Pride is the root sin of all sins. It is the original sin. To be filled with the sin of pride is to metaphorically partake of the fruit of the tree of death. It is to deceive oneself into believing that you have the authority to redirect the moral order and remain free of any consequences for your rebellious actions. Do not be deceived. Know that there are always consequences. Yehovah God's promise holds true to this day. Quote, you will certainly die. Genesis 2, 17. And whenever you see an individual or a group or a nation lifted up in the pride of their hearts, even to the point of celebration in their defiant acts of disobedience, rest assured that destruction is at the door. As the world and those of it choose to dedicate the month of June to the sin of pride, I would encourage you to dedicate this same month and all months hereafter to the virtue of humility. The spirit of pride says, I want to be God. But the spirit of humility says, Yehovah already is God. The spirit of pride boasts, I get to do whatever I want. But the spirit of humility says, I have the blessing of doing whatever Yehovah God wants. 
the spirit of pride foolishly believes there won't be any consequences for my actions. But the spirit of humility understands there are always consequences for sinful actions. Beware which spirit you allow to influence you. In the book of Proverbs, we read of this promise. God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Proverbs 3, 34 and James 4, 6. This is why our Lord Yeshua declared, All those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all those who humble themselves will be exalted. Matthew 23, 12. We can either voluntarily choose to humble ourselves before the Almighty God, and by so doing draw closer into loving relationship with our glorious Creator, or we can heap the burning coals of judgment upon our own heads and await Yehovah to humble us Himself. Choosing to humble ourselves before God and to obey His word is to partake of the tree of life. But to lift ourselves up in the sin of pride and choose to disobey God is to partake of the tree of death. Thus, the choice laid out before us is the same choice presented to Adam and Eve, life and death. Which tree will you choose to partake of? In love, I encourage you to choose humility. Choose obedience to God. Choose life. As Moses declared to the house of Israel in the wilderness, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life, so that you and your children may live. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. Shalom and Amen. My brothers and sisters, in all humility and all love, I do encourage you in the holy and hallowed almighty name of Yehovah and the name of his holy son Yeshua. Please make the choice. Choose to humble yourself before the almighty God. Choose to partake of the fruit of the tree of life. Choose to reject that spirit of pride that boasts in its arrogance, I get to be God. I get to choose for myself. I get to determine what's right and what's wrong, what's good and what's evil, what's sweet and what's bitter. We know, as it's recorded in Isaiah chapter 5, woe to those who put light for darkness and darkness for light, good for evil, evil for good, sweet for bitter and bitter for sweet. Woe to them who are filled with that spirit of pride, who in their arrogance have deceived, <laughs> have been deceived ultimately by that serpent, by the dragon, by Satan, but they've deceived themselves in believing that lie, that they get to be God, they get to do whatever they want, they get to redirect the moral order, thinking that there won't be any consequences for their prideful, prideful actions. There are consequences. We can only hope that, like Nebuchadnezzar, as we read, 
from Daniel chapter 4, they will choose to look up to the heavens in repentance and declare that Yehovah, he is the king of heaven. He is the only one who writes the moral order. He is the only lawgiver. He is the one that determines what's right and what's wrong. So this month and all months after, dedicate it to that virtue of humility and be favored by that almighty King of heaven. I love you all so very, very much, and I hope that this has been a blessing to you. Yehovah bless you and keep you. Yehovah make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yehovah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of his Son, Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Thank you again, my brothers and sisters, and God willing, <laughs> just got to fix the internet issue. <laughs> I'll be seeing you all very soon. Shalom and good night.